Hi traders and welcome back with another video here with FX Big Dog. Remember, this is the weekly update. In the weekly update, we look at technical analysis based on the weekly time frame, but also we take a look at the fundamentals. What are we expecting to move the market this week? If it's nothing, that's fine, but let's go ahead and take a look and see the details before we make that decision. With that being said, traders, I'll see you right after this. Well, traders, welcome back with the, uh, another update on the weekly news as well as technical analysis. We're going to go ahead and take a look in this video exactly what the markets are expected to do based on technical analysis and then what could disrupt the, uh, the technical analysis based on news reports. We also looked at last week, we looked at the non-farm payroll. The numbers came out pretty much ex as expected. We didn't really see the market move as much in a positive move for the dollar. We did see some bearish move on the dollar. And also, we are expecting the dollar to weaken over the next couple of weeks. We'll take a look and see how that's set up as well so we can prepare ourselves for trade setups. With that being said, traders, let's dig into the, 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 the technical analysis and then combine it with the fundamentals to determine what we're going to do this week in trading. I'm going to go to the charts, and then on the charts, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the dollar index first. So we had some news come out last week. This was the non-farm payroll. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of a bigger view on that. And we can see that last week closed out. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer on that. Drag it over to the middle of the screen. And you can see right here we definitely had a bearish move on the dollar. Bearish move on the dollar. It closed out with a dark cloud cover. It's a bearish candlestick formation. And there it is right about there. That's positive for a bearish move for the dollar. Now, what can we expect this week out of the dollar? Well, if I go to the actual lower time frame, this is the lower time frame. It is a one hour time frame right here. And there is a lot of, I call it real estate. There's a lot of real estate to the upside right here before the market moved down. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do get some upside move just as a correction move. Traders, I'm not expecting a big move to the upside. But if I do see the market moving up slightly to the upside, this is something that we can anticipate because when the market moves in waves, it normally has a corrective sequence in play. And the move that we're going to see on the dollar index could be just a corrective sequence. And that's okay. I can deal with that. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we're going to expect out of the different pairs this week. Now, traders, I'm going to cover. 28 currency pairs this evening, right? And uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the first currency pair right here, which is going to be the Aussie CAD. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the weekly time frame just to take a look and see how the weekly closed out. Now, I also want to go ahead and just change a few things on my ch uh, on my settings. And I'm using Smart Trader for those that are wondering what chart I am using. I'm using Smart Trader right now. As my charting software. All right, now if I look at the charting software right now, I'm expecting price to move up to around about retesting the wave one low right here before heading back down south. So I'm looking for on the uh, Aussie CAD, I'm possibly, possibly looking for a bullish move on the week. Bullish move of the week. Now, nothing's discounting a possible downward move before the market moves up. So we could get a retest of what's currently happening at the moment right now, which is considering that we're hitting a bit of support. But I definitely do see that the market could come down further down south to around about this level, just below 0 0.88. That's what I'm expecting on Aussie CAD. Now, before I get deep into the market analysis, let me go ahead and open up the charts. I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, the news right here, and I'm going to go ahead and just type it in right here. And it's going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, uh, the calendar at the moment right now. I want to look at the calendar to see how the calendar is set up for the week. This is how we see the week right here. Now, you can see Sunday, no data coming out this Sunday, which is fine. 
But then as we go into the further, into the uh, the, the uh, deeper part of the week, we can see that we do have some news coming out right here, which is important for us as traders to pay attention to. All right. One of the things that we need to pay attention to, and I guess I'm going way down below right here, is of course uh, Thursday. Thursday we have the euro, and I'm looking more at the press conference right here. We have ECB press conference taking place at around about 8.30 in the morning. We also have the, uh, the decision. This is the refinancing rate that is expected to stay, stay unchanged at 0%. All right, that's going to be a price mover right there, and that is only on Thursday, which means traders, we're basically heading into a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday without the data and people speculating what could happen on the Thursday. We've got a whole three days of trading before the news comes out. Very important that we, we see that this could be holding things up for us right here. Now, that's on the euro. And, and by the way, just go ahead and throw the, uh, the spanner in the works right here. We have seen Euro weekend over the last few, uh, few weeks. So this could be just either an added uh, weakness to the Euro, or we could see a correction move in the Euro. It all depends on how the technicals are set up. A lot of you don't realize that the technicals are really the front runners. The fundamentals are the ones that really just help us get to either the retracement moves or towards our targets in the direction of the trend. So that's important for us to go ahead and check out. Now, getting back to the, to the, uh, the screen right here, we'll notice that at the end of the week, we don't have a lot of news coming out. Now, the reason why I say this is because traders, we've had over the, the uh, probably the last uh, six months to, to eight months from now, We've had a lot of the times where we've seen Thursday and Friday being a really big trend uh, day of the week. And, um, and if you look at the news right here, there's no news that could really disrupt the movement of the market, which means that Monday, Tuesday could be very slow. And considering if we look at the fundamentals, maybe with the fundamentals being uh, Thursday news out of the ECB, we could say to see some trendy moves taking place on Thursday and Friday, which is exciting, which is good, which means that we've got Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to pretty much look and identify, identify trading opportunities so we can take advantage of that on Thursday and Friday. Now, going back to the charts right here, let's go to the charts. And I'm going to pop open the, uh, the Aussie cat. Oh, my bad. I'm pushing the wrong buttons right here. There we go. So we've got the Aussie CAD opened up right here. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the next currency pair, Aussie Swiss. Aussie Swiss traders, listen here. If I go ahead and compress the charts, we may have spoken about this last week at the uh, with the weekly update, and you can see right here, no doubt in my mind, support right here, support down there. This happened with the flash crash, uh, with the uh, the Swiss flash crash. The markets come back to retest that low. We've bounced off that low. We've got very key uh, support right here. We're probably going to be expecting a, uh, Aussie Swiss to continue its rally for this week. So this rally, uh, this rally that we're seeing right here, we may continue to see this rally over the next um, the next few days heading into this week. Uh, no doubt about that. So traders, I want to clarify. I want to clarify this when I say to you, we're expecting rally this week. Does it mean you just go ahead and buy right now? No. What I'm saying is it's a buy on dips week this week. All right. Buy on dips. What does buy on dips mean to you? It means that if the market dips down, you, you look for the opportunity to buy. Now, you could get in with different opportunities. It could be using any sort of a trending EA, which is an expert advisor, going ahead and making sure that that advisor is buying on the dips. What does advisor mean for some of you that don't understand that? It means it's, it's an automated trading system. And an automated trading system will go ahead and have some sort of parameters in that will go ahead and get you in the trade when the market sets up the conditions. So that's what you're going to be doing right here. You're looking for buying conditions to get in on the trade and start getting in and buying it long. That's what you're looking for. And buying on dips is pretty much this. It means that the market's dipping like this and going north. That's what you're looking for. All these little dips right here 
is what you're looking to get into the market on, right? When the market rallies, dips down, you get in. Market rallies, gets down, you get in. That's the way we're going to go ahead and trade this this week. Now, this is the Aussie uh, Swiss franc. Let's go back to the charts and take a look right here. Uh, JPY, this is Aussie trade against the JPY. Listen here, I don't know if you've seen it. I'm seeing it right now. But we have a lot of possibilities that Aussie is strengthening against the major crosses. And that's a good sign right here, right? That's an absolute good sign. Because that means traders that we're going to be looking to buy Aussie, G Aussie across the board. Whether it's against Aussie Swiss, Aussie JPY, Aussie New Zealand dollar, Aussie US dollar, Aussie Canadian dollar. All of those setups, every single one of those Aussie crosses is setting up an opportunity for us to go ahead and start buying. Listen here, it doesn't take us a lot to identify that the markets identify that the Aussie is getting strong across the board. And so you can see it. The signs are there. Buy Aussie this week. All right. Now, I want to remind you, I'm talking to myself right now and I'm thinking out loud. So what I'm saying right now is really just education that I'm passing on to you. Right. Whether you take it or not and decide what you do, it's up to you. Remember, this is just educational knowledge that I'm passing on right here. So I'm thinking out loud and I'm saying to myself, me as a trader would be thinking, buy Aussie this week. The reason why we're going to buy Aussie, because it's showing on most of the currency pairs at the moment. Let's continue. So, this is Aussie JPY. What are we going to look at to do Aussie JPY? Buy on dips on Aussie JPY this week. Let's go to Aussie New Zealand dollar. Man, woo! <laughs> Check this out. Are you kidding me? Right here. Support. Support. Right? Support. Support. Boom! Support. You should have seen this coming way, way back down there, right? Support. Market's going to get hit and test this resistance. We may get a little dip down right here, but it's going to continue to rally to the upside. Why is that? Why is that? Because, traders, we are inside consolidation. What does consolidation do? It holds support. It holds resistance. We can buy support, sell it resistance. That's what we're going to do at this point right here. Check this out. Go ahead and compress the charts. And all I've got to do right here is compress the charts right here. And you've seen the money right there. All right? Check it out. Here is our resistance. And here is there's the resistance. There's the support. The market's holding at the support. We're going back to the top of resistance. This is Aussie New Zealand dollar. Listen here. Very, very, very good friend of mine. Colleague as well. Working with the Aussie US dollar. He's trading Aussie US dollar. His name is Chris Polver. He loves Aussie New Zealand dollar. And he's going in and he's buying and he's looking for a price to move back up again. 1.14, uh, sorry, 1.14 is his target. Well, I'm sure he's getting it out of that a little bit earlier. But the target of the what I'm seeing right now is all the way up here at 1.014. Sorry. 1.14 is the target that I'm identifying here on the chart. Um, whether you're, getting, you're taking profit a little bit up, you know, up at this level right here and deciding to get it back in on the dips, that's up to you. All right, that's up to you. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next setup. Now that was the Aussie. Uh, oh, we got one more pair out of the Aussie. Aussie US dollar. Now, this year we spoke about the Aussie US dollar weakness. Um, or at least the uh, the US dollar weakness. We spoke about US dollar weakness last week. We spoke about the uh, non-farm peril. The numbers came out. Uh, Trump tweeted out, jobs are great. But did it affect the way the markets are moving right now? No. The dollar index is still indicating that we're going to see a bearish move in the dollar. If we get a bearish move in the dollar, what does it mean for the Aussie US dollar? It means that Aussie US dollar is going to rally. Now, hold on a second here. Remember I spoke to you about the Aussie crosses that are getting strong, which means Aussie getting strong against all the other majors? Well, in this case right now, this is going to be a huge move on Aussie US dollar. Why do I say that? Because we're getting weak US dollar and we're getting strong Aussie dollar. That means that traders, this means that this 
is going to be an awesome breakout to the upside. Price traces off to this level right here, which is 0 0.74. Mark's going to chase off to that level right there. No doubt about it. When we break out of that resistance. All right. So look out for the Aussie US dollar. Continue to buy Aussie US dollar bullish because it's going to go up. Retest the resistance here on the trend line. Once we break, break through that, it's going to then chase after 0 0.7400. That's the price that you should go ahead and mark down on your charts. Let's go ahead and take a look at some Canadian crosses. So the Canadian Swiss franc is found support right here. I'm not a fan of the Canadian Swiss franc. We see a lot of support, a lot of resistance right here. We have a little bit of movement to the top side before we have to go ahead and make decisions right here. So I'm not going to do much on the Canadian Swiss franc. Now, because we're looking at the Canadian crosses, let's go ahead and take a look at U.S. oil. I love looking at U.S. oil to go ahead and determine what the markets are doing overall. If you look over here on U.S. oil, and I'm going to go ahead and compress the charts a little bit right here, and I can see that we are expecting price on oil to work its way back down to, well, over a long period of time, down to about $32 a barrel. Now, this is the weekly time frame. I get it. We could get down to that level maybe towards the end of the year. So I'm not going to be focusing more on the long-term outlook, but let's take a look at the short-term outlook. The short-term outlook shows us that price has done something like this. We've moved down south. We come back up. It's going ahead and test this level. We may go back up here. It looks like we may be range bound. Maybe $60 or just above $60 a barrel. Market's going to go ahead and find resistance again. So we could get a little bit of resistance. But it doesn't look like the, the market's really dominating or this U.S. oil is really dominating the direction of the Canadian dollar. Because if that's the case, then Aussie CAD would not be rallying, which we've already spoken about Aussie CAD rallying. Now, if we go back to the, uh, let's go back to the, let's see here, uh, the CAD Swiss. Now, in this case right here, we are looking for Canadian to rally, which means that US oil will go ahead and promote an upside move on CAD Swiss franc. We could see the market come back up to resistance. I don't think we have enough with Canadian news as well as, of course, with the uh, uh, the data uh, with U.S. oil to push price above that level. We're probably going to hit resistance there at that point, which looks like probably around about 75.50 could be a, a good resistance level for the Canadian Swiss franc. I'm not a fan of Canadian Swiss franc, though. Let's go to uh, CAD JPY. CAD JPY traders, once again, Look at the long outlook right here. Gives us that support and resistance levels. We can definitely see that uh, price has a little support right about here. Let me go ahead and draw that line. Got support right about here. And we've got a little bit of resistance coming down here. A little bit in the wedge. Price is closed out with a big bullish candle right here. We're expecting buying on dips on CAD JPY. I guess. The news last week, which was Friday, right? If you go to the calendar right here, go to last week's news. Not only did we have the non-farm payroll out here in the U.S., but of course we also had news coming out in Canada. There is the news out in Canada. Take a look right here. We had positive news, really positive news out of the employment change. And then look at the, uh, the employment rate. That stayed unchanged at 5.6%. But definitely, without a doubt, some great news out of the employment change for Canada. And that's really been uh, motivated, uh, or at least motivating the movement out in the Canadian crosses. So Canadian JPY definitely see some rally. Now also, the fact that the trade war is a little bit slightly uh, muted at the moment right now, could see some weakness out in, in the JPY. If that's the case, then maybe then, a good buy on the CAD JPY would be a, an option for us this week. Buying on dips, which means the gain traders. And let me go down to the lower time frame just to give you a little bit of a heads up on this. Take a look right here. So this is the lower time frame right here. And if you go to the lower time frame, you can see here on the lower time frame that price is going to work its way back up. I'm going to go ahead and make some changes here to this wave one and so 
I'm um, looking over here. This is important right here. Take a look at the one. The, this is the one hour time frame. We are heading very close. This is why I say we've got a bit of upside rally still left here. We're very close to a resistance level right there. At that point, we're going to start seeing a dip and then a, a further rally to the upside. Now, this means that traders that were at a top buying uh, CAD JPY may not be the smartest idea right now in the beginning of the week. But if we can get back down here towards the end of the week, we could see some rally uh, that we can take advantage of this upside move. So maybe holding off on the, uh, the Canadian JPY towards the latter part of the week and then looking for buying opportunities may be a good, a good option. All right. Now, moving on to the, uh, the Swiss JPY. Swiss JPY, let's go back to the weekly. Listen here. I just have to show you this chart right here. And this chart right here is showing us what? Support, support, support. Buy on dips going long. Look at that. Support there. A nice little bullish candle right here. We've got support over here. We've got support over here. we got support there with that little wick going down right here. Traders, we should be thinking to buy on dips going long. So Swiss JPY. Again. If you actually think about this, we're seeing a lot of weakness out in JPY. So we're getting strength in, in, in the Canadian dollar. We're getting weakness out of JPY. And we're getting Aussie strength as well. What does this all start telling us? If we think about the data, with, or at least the technicals, what it's telling us that trade between the US and China is actually becoming a positive thing for this week's, of, this week's of trading. So this means that traders that, hey, listen, I've always said that fundamentals are slightly behind technicals. Technicals lead the fundamentals. So based on what I'm seeing right now, could it be, I'm just saying, could it be that we are going to see some positive news out, the, uh, out of the trade war this week that could drive these pairs going long? Because everything we're seeing right here is indicating positive trade wars. Hey. I'm not going to say it's going to happen. I'm just saying, could it be? Now, so that means Swiss JPY looking to buy on the dips. Traders, I, man, I love the Euro Aussie. And I, be, I have been speaking about Euro Aussie for some time, right? We spoke about the Euro Aussie prediction. I'm not going to talk about it today, all right? This is the outlook for the week, but I'm not going to talk about the Euro Aussie prediction today. But remember, just a quick one. Remember, we spoke about a 2,700 pip opportunity going south towards this level of support right here at around about 136.68. This giving us a great starting point for traders to go ahead and start selling on the rallies. So right now, still a seller on the Euro Aussie. Right, still a sell on your Aussie. Any rally, look to trade it short. We look for a break of this trend line and for the market to drop further down south. Long term, I'm talking about really long term, this could take us all the way to the mid part of 2020. We could see Aussie, uh, Euro Aussie bearish at that level. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next Euro CAD. Euro CAD starting to break out of that trend line. Here it is, there. You can see the weekly trend line. We broke it out. It's actually showed us a nice, let me go zoom in a little bit, nice little bearish weekly last week. We do have a little support right about here. And that support could be temporary right there. And as you see the market break down, if we do see any sort of retracement, it will be short-lived and the market should continue to work its way back down south. Remember traders, what did I say? I said that we're expecting weaker euro, uh, euro across the board. And this could absolutely be, again, EuroCAD said heading south. Let's go to Euro Swiss Strength. Keep it in mind, we're expecting some weakness out in Euro. But at the same time, because of the trade war, Swiss Strength may be reacting differently. Which means we may see some weakness out of Swiss Strength too because of the trade war. Well, the positive trade war. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get some positive news. But just the way the data is set up right now. It's a very high possibility. Look, Euro Swiss rank, I'm expecting a little rally. Not because of Euro rally, maybe because of weakness out in Swiss rank. So, a little bit on the sideline on this. And the reason why 
we can see that there's a lot of consolidation, a lot of indecision right here. Uh, but according to the wave structure that we have right here, we're expecting move to the upside. So I'm going to say this. On Euro Swiss Franc, if we're range bound and we start breaking out of the range, maybe this will take us this whole week and by the end of the week, maybe begin next week, we'll start seeing a break out of the range. If we see a break out of the range, then this may be a buying opportunity moving north. We may not be there quite yet. The signals are not there. Let's go to Euro US Dollar. Euro US dollar traders, no doubt in my mind, I'm a seller on Euro pound. Sorry, I said Euro US dollar. I meant Euro pound. On Euro pound, I am a seller on Euro pound. If I go ahead and flip over to the daily time frame right here, then I can see that I definitely have hit a bit of support. But I've been focusing on the Euro pound, looking for the market to trade past this level right here at 188.91. We got a little bit close to that. It could be a little correction right here, test the uh, resistance there, and then start working its way back down south. So 88.91, look for price to go ahead and take out 88.91. So seller on Euro Pound, obviously traders, uh, I'm going to be looking to sell on rallies on Euro Pound. Look for Euro Pound to continue. And not just that, in the long term, all right, I spoke about the short term 88.91. But in the long term, if price continues to work its way back down, then we should be heading down towards this support level right here of this trend line, which could take us well below 8,400. So 0.8400. And then as we go to the uh, Euro JPY, Euro JPY, we see a little bit of support right here. Again, this is not because of Euro strength. But more like JPY weakness, this is going to drive this pair back up on this retracement. I would probably be a buyer on dips on Euro JPY this week. Euro New Zealand dollar. What do we got here? Nice little bearish candle. But more important traders, just go ahead and compress the chart right here. I want you, I want you to look at Euro, uh, Euro New Zealand dollar right here. I don't know, I may have said something different. But Euro New Zealand dollar right here, we've got resistance here at the top. Let me go ahead and mark it off here. There's resistance. Look at all of this real estate right here as price can work its way back down to this level at 148. That is cool because traders, this is a wave one, this is a wave two right here. We're heading into wave three, wave four, and wave five. So this is great opportunity for traders to go ahead and think about selling on the rallies on Euro New Zealand dollar. All right. Very cool. I love Euro New Zealand dollar. Great setup on Euro New Zealand dollar. Euro US dollar. Let's go take a look right here. Euro US dollar. We've got a bit of indecision here. I'm probably going to go ahead and look to the daily time frame. And you'll probably see a wedge. Yep, we see a wedge. There it is there. I don't like the way the daily has gone ahead and closed out. Look at that right here. All right. Not a fan of this. And that's because traders, not only do we have weak US dollar, but we have weak euro. So this is weak on both sides of, those, of the spectrum right here. Both US dollar and euro is weak, giving us a lot of indecision right here. Not a fan of euro US dollar. Although, i got to say although, I am expecting dollar to be weaker, which means that we could see a slow upward move on euro to the upside. We can definitely look at this a little bit more in the week, but this is definitely not a big, I'm not a big fan of Euro US dollar this week. Pound, Aussie. Pound, Aussie. Let's flip it over to the uh, uh, weekly right here. And looking at this uh, setup right here, I'm expecting, um, uh, ooh, actually, in fact, let's compress this a little bit right here. So we see this is in a range. Uh, to be honest with you, traders, pound Aussie, not a fan of pound Aussie on the weekly. Let me go to the, uh, uh, the, the daily time frame right here. Yeah, I would probably be on the sideline on the daily, uh, all these on pound Aussie. Not a fan of pound Aussie this week. All right, not a fan of pound Aussie. Simply move on to a different currency pair. Let's go ahead and move on to pound CAD. Pound CAD, a lot of indecision here at the uh, last week. And this could be due to the fact that we're expecting some strength out in uh, pound. 
And we also got some strength out in the Canadian. So with the two pairs, both pound and Canadian, both strong, that's given us that indecision week this week. So this, I guess the thing that we need to do is wait for proper confirmation on pound cat. Let's go to pound JPY. Pound JPY, no doubt, given us some sort of indication. Now this, again, the reason why we're getting some very solid directional bias here is because of two things. Pound's getting stronger and JPY is getting weaker. All right. Pound stronger, JPY weaker. It should be a no-brainer. Expected buy on dips this week on pound JPY. All right, let's take a look at Swiss JPY. Oh, sorry, pound Swiss, my bad. Pound Swiss, no-brainer no, no right here. The same thing with JPY. JPY weakness, Swiss weakness. Therefore, pound Swiss, we should be looking to buy on dips on pound Swiss. All right, pound Swiss bullish. Pound New Zealand dollar. Now, I'm still... Looking at the uh, prediction that I spoke about last week, we had an awesome tra trade right here. Market closed out with a bearish candle last week. Remember, traders, we said that we couldn't be expecting pound New Zealand to, to drop further down south, right? We, that was one of the predictions that we had over the last few weeks. Now, it, I, I, I'm going to be real honest with you. I wasn't a fan of pound uh, New Zealand dollar. Uh, towards about the mid part of last week and I'm still not a great fan of this move until I can see price trade below this level I'll be watching it very closely this week I want the market to trade back below around about 190 All right write it down 190 if we can get back below 1.90 right here on the pound New Zealand dollar I would want to go ahead and continue to sell the pound New Zealand dollar. But at the moment right now, we're at a very critical level. You can see strong resistance, strong support. And what I don't want to see this week is price going back up here. Because if it does, there's, very, there's a high possibility that we could continue with a strong pound. All right. So very, very important traders. We're at a critical level right here. And if we can break through 190, in fact, if you take a look, a look at the levels right here, uh, we're actually at the support level. And that's really at the 190.76 level. So uh, what we're probably going to have to see is pound uh, New Zealand dollar breaking through this level and getting to a close of the week at around about 190. Hold on. Let's just get a little bit more technical here. Let's take a look at the... All right. There it is. Okay. So... Um, so yes, uh, we need to, we're at 190.96 at the moment right now. And so I guess what I'm saying here is if we can break through and let me go ahead and pull up a horizontal line right here. And let's see here if I pull that up a little higher, that's at 190.60. So I want to see the market close below 190.60. If we can close below 190.60, it may then go ahead and encourage me to continue to hold short on pound New Zealand dollar. But we want to stay above, and let's throw that level up there. We want to go ahead and stay above 193, uh, sorry, below, my bad, below 193.31. So we could be, we could be range bound. But if I see anything bullish on my 8 hour, I'm going to get the heck out of Dodge because then I know that we're pretty much range bound as the market finds support, finds resistance, and now we're back at support. So um, I can't see this being anything bullish on the 8 hour until it takes it out and, or at least closes up above 193.31. But uh, if I start, hang on, you know what, let's get a little more technical right here. Let's take a look at the 1 hour. Okay. So I think what I'm saying right here is if I start seeing price around about 192, maybe that'll be a start. That maybe that will start giving me the signs of saying, "Hey, let's get the heck out of Dodge, right? Let's get the heck out of Dodge." So anything above 192 could be a little saying, a little bit, you know, concerning, and we could start thinking about uh, getting out of any shorts. 
At the moment right now, we're still going to hold short on this. Let's see what happens over the next couple of days. We'll go ahead and review that again. All right, and then pound US dollar. What do you got with pound US dollar right here? Pound US dollar, it looks like uh, we have uh, strong pound, weak, uh, weak uh, 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 US dollar. So I guess if we are going to see a little bit of strength in the dollar, that could give us a, a little bit of a correction, maybe down to about 122.18 again, and then start working his way back up north. I would think that if you're getting the buying opportunity, so buy on dips on pound US dollar this week. All right, let's go to the weekly. Yeah, check the weekly. Come on, this is no brainer right here, right? Look at the weekly. Support, support, both levels right here. We got support down here. We got support over here as well. Support, support, let's look for a breakout to the upside. At least come back and retest this level of resistance. All right. We'll talk more about Brexit during the week because there's certainly going to be some Brexit news out this week. And if not, maybe even tomorrow. But we'll talk about that in the week. Uh, New Zealand CAD, same thing. Hit support around here on the New Zealand CAD. I'm also expecting some New Zealand strength as well. We hit support right here. We've got a slight push. So I'm going to go ahead and expect some bullish rally on New Zealand CAD. Let's take a look at New Zealand Swiss. Same thing. Looking to buy New Zealand Swiss on the dips. New Zealand Swiss close out with a bullish candlestick formation. Expecting the rally to continue this week on New Zealand Swiss. Let's go to New Zealand JPY. Same thing out of New Zealand JPY. I will be watching though that support level, strong support at 69.32. Price is trading at the moment right now at 69, uh, 68.69. Which means that we've still got about uh, another 70 pips or so before we hit that strong support that's now going to become resistance. So watch out for that. We'll definitely keep an eye open for that level there. And then as we move on to the um, New Zealand US dollar right here. And we take a look at that. Let's see traders again. A nice little strong Listen here, there's one thing I like about what we're seeing right now in the U in New Zealand US dollar is that the fact that the market's gone ahead and got to our third wave target, hit, hit that level almost a, you know, a few pips away, but we hit that level, or sorry, a few pips through that level, but we hit that level on the third wave and price has now gone ahead and confirmed a nice bullish candlestick formation right here. I would be a buyer on New Zealand US dollar. Again, expecting a little weakness out of New, New Zealand uh, US dollar. And if the US dollar does strengthen a little bit in the beginning of the week, that's okay because that will mean a little dip before the rally. And that's what we want to do. Buy on dips. Buy on dips, traders, on New Zealand US dollar. Let's go to US dollar CAD. <laughs> you, you're probably saying what I'm thinking right now. Buy, uh, uh, sorry, sell on rallies on U US dollar CAD. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a few things. Now, also, let's talk about the fundamentals. What are we expecting? We're expecting a possible uh, uh, weak US dollar, right? Weak US dollar, slightly bullish. Remember, we said that the U US oil could be range bound, so we could see some strength out in the Canadians. If we get some strength out of the Canadians and weaker US dollar, what's going to happen? This is going to dip down. So sell on rallies on US dollar CAD. US dollar Swiss. Uh, range bound, if you take a look right here, we're a little range bound on this pair. Let me compress a little bit more. Drag it down a bit so we can get some more data on this. And looking at the details right here, huh? Interesting. Um, let's see. We got support right about here. We got resistance up here at the top. Resistance right here at the top. Market loss hit the support level, so which means that we're expecting price to move back up. But if we think about this right here logically, 
based on fundamentals, we're looking at weaker US dollar uh, and weaker uh, Swiss franc because of trade wars, right? If that's the case, now when I say weaker Swiss franc, that just means that you know that we are on a a, a, a different a, a different uh, uh, risk on risk off approach this week based on trade wars, which means that if we can see mark uh, see traders moving out of safe haven currencies, it means we should see weak Swiss franc, weak J, weak JPY, and in the current right now we're going to see weak US dollar. So this could mean that we could be sideways in this pair. I'll stay away from US dollar Swiss franc this week. It's just going to be sideways. And then lastly, US dollar JPY. US dollar JPY. If we look over here, US dollar weakness, that's what we're expecting, but we're also expecting weak JPY. So this week, not expecting a whole bunch out of this move right here. Unless JPY is a lot weaker than the dollar, then we could see the market rally north. But I'm not going to look at this pair. Also going to stay away from this, thinking it's going to be a little bit range bound, unless we start seeing some really weak uh, JPY. And if we get weak, really weak JPY this week, which means that across the board, we're going to see the same sort of movement. If that's going to be the case, then yes, we can expect uh, a weak JPY that could push US dollar JPY north. As you can see, traders, there are great opportunities this week. There are perfect setups based on support or resistance. Now the opportunity is what we do on the lower time frames. And how we grab these opportunities will depend on whether you're a scalper, a swing trader, or a position trader. Now there's going to be different ways that traders would want to go ahead and trade this. And I'm going to be posting on certain setups that I'm going to be looking at this week. So it's very important that you subscribe to this channel. If you haven't already, go ahead today. Subscribe just below. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button. Also make sure that you click on the bell button because that's going to set up the alerts for you and let you know when I'm posting the video. Traders, it's an exciting week this week. Trading opportunities are presenting itself. I believe on Tuesday and Wednesday it should start presenting itself. So with that being said, traders, I'm going to see you in the next video. And thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys. And I'll see you next time.